you're locked in with the innovators. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. What's going on? You locked in with the Innovators YouTube. You already know I got the best interviews right here, man. Shout out to my sponsor, St. Eyes Blunts. Make sure to get you one of those. I got Cypress Moreno in here, man. He does everything. This is the sound mm -hmm. behind the LA music scene. Welcome, bro. What's popping? Man, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. This is a this is a long way to interview. And um it, I got I actually got a special story I want to share because uh one of my homies. DJ One More, shout out to One More. Yeah, he told shout out me DJ One More. He told me in 2018. I really remember this. He, we, for some reason, we were all at Dash, and you was outside. Okay. And he told me. He said, he said that guy will be one of the biggest producers in LA hey, in that, the future. That's, that's my dog. Shout out, <laughs> hey, no, shout out DJ One More, man. This is this is a story between me and One More. My first club gig ever, bro. First club gig ever. Um. I have a borrowed laptop. Actually, it's my mom's work laptop, right? Really? Man, <laughs> never <laughs> never forget, right? Um, it's my first club gig. I'm opening it up like at, I don't know, like 10, bro. Like, ain't nobody in the motherfucking club where, like, they push it back to, like, 10, 30, got a little 30-minute slot, right? Yeah. And um, this, this laptop was, like, a HP or it was, like, a Windows computer. And I don't know. As soon as I plugged it into the... Uh, to the equipment to the Serato like the whole computer crash right oh, shit. so I had like a little a little backup flash drive with all my music and shit so I'm like yeah. damn fuck um, but this is like my, my first time really meeting one more we had like uh, been connected um, by uh, through a mutual through a mutual friend yeah and um, he looked out man he let me you know use my my uh, my little flash drive I use his um his laptop and no, then shit. I, That's crazy. We, from, from, <laughs> I feel like from that point on, man, we've been locked in. Yeah. We've been super locked in. But shout out DJ one more for sure. Nah, for sure. And I, I, he was right. I tell him, I'll be like, hey, I was like, bro, you, that was a good call. I always <laughs> recognize people that make good calls about like industry shit. Yeah. So he, he was a, uh, yeah, and he, was and he one of the coldest DJs too. Nah, that's real. my boy. He changed my life for sure. <laughs> uh, to start off, just let the people know where you're from, where they can find you on social media. Yeah, you know, born and raised Los Angeles, California, two one three. Yeah. Um, you can find me at Cypress Moreno, Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. Uh really shit. Spotify and Apple Music, Cypress Moreno. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere for sure. All DSPs. Tell me, how did you grow up? Were your parents around? What was that like for you? Uh yeah, I grew up with young parents. They had me at um twenty years old, so like yeah, I grew I grew up with young parents, so yeah. I feel like I uh I experienced a different childhood than most. Yeah. Um but they were more fun, you would say? Yeah. yeah. Uh they were yeah, they were young. <laughs> <laughs> they're young. Um but not I mean shit. I wouldn't change anything about the way I grew up for real. Yeah. Um but as far as are you asking like um I guess my musical influence? Not 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 necessarily just like your household, like how household, oh yeah. I mean Yeah, you have brothers and sisters. I got yeah, I got two younger brothers. Okay. Uh, I got a big family on my mom's side. Yeah. Um what is your ethnicity? I'm half Salvadoran, half Guatemalan, so Wow, okay, okay. I've been always yeah. wondering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but um that's what's up. That's what's up. But I always just like to see like what people's background are and what they come from because I always feel like everybody comes has it just shows me that everybody has a different background and like some people have their parents, some people don't, and they still yeah. could end up the same way yeah, or different. Yeah. You feel me? Vice versa. No, I had a you know a, a nice household growing up. So yeah. shout out to them. Nah, for sure, for sure. Um, how did your family react when you started making music or wanted to make music? That's a great question. They was all against it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it it was really the the like you want to be a DJ. You know what I'm saying? Because like that's really what I what I jumped into at yeah. first, just DJing and shit. Yeah. But but yeah, the initial reaction. I mean, they've always been supportive with anything, but yeah. like you know, they were on on some go to school. Oh, they wanted you like to go to school. And yeah. Like, okay. Okay. Like. I I mean I grew up going to um private school so yeah. uh education was definitely like a a big big like thing yeah big thing for for them I mean they, they what do they want you to be or they just, anything specifically <laughs> want, want me to go to school get good grades and you know <laughs> yeah take that route but um no nah, I did end up going to college for about a year yeah and then where uh, University of Arizona okay how yeah. was that. 
It was lit. I love AZ. Yeah. <laughs> Tucson, the, the dirty T. Man, nah, hey, that college experience, like, it definitely, um, I was just thinking about college, like, not too long ago, too, like, just randomly, because uh, I feel like I'm so far removed from from being in the classroom yeah. and being in college, but, uh, but yeah, like, college was a great experience, met a lot of great people, and, like, that's really kind of where I started, like, I guess making noise with with the DJ shit. Really? Yeah. Did you DJ before college? Of course, though. Right? Yeah, I DJed a little. Like, really, I, I I spoke on that first gig with DJ One More, right? Yeah. Club Element or yeah. Empire, right off of Hollywood and Kawanga, right? Um, yeah. that was like basically. I I think that was like towards the end of my senior year. Like once football season was done. I just had a lot of free time and took this little DJing, you know, pass me the ox hobby yeah. to, you know, <laughs> as far as I could take it. Because yeah. it really just started with just fucking around in the classroom, you know, virtual DJ and then yeah. jumping into Serato. <laughs> but, like, I had already, like, been familiar with Serato. I have a couple of uncles and family friends, Shorty and Mauricio, that, that were DJs and, like, they had techniques and, and turntables and, and vinyl. So I, like... I was around it and I knew how to use it too. So like transitioning yeah. from like, I guess vinyl to Serato, it was like r really easy, like yeah. really easy for me to do. That's tight. But um, damn, lost my train of thought. We was talking about college. <laughs> you was talking about college, and how you got your start, and how you <laughs> oh. transitioned from you know, your people who had showed you how to use the Serato and yeah. the vinyl. Yeah, <laughs> man, I forgot the the original question, but um, uh, we were just talking about like um. Like one of the first how your family reacted to you getting oh, into yeah, music. Oh yeah, yeah. How did how did react? It? Yeah. Um, the most supportive uh, person was one of my uncles who passed away. Rest in peace, uh, rest my uncle peace Edgar. Sure. He was like, "Man, you gonna you know you gonna be great at anything you decide to do. Like you could do anything you want to do, and I know like you're gonna be you know you're gonna be straight. So like that's big. Um, yeah, that was really big, especially at that time because like he was pretty much uh speaking up for me. Yeah. Like he, and everybody he, was like, no. it, it, and I, <laughs> and don't get me wrong, like they still like, I mean, they see how how things are going right now and shit, yeah. but they, I'm I'm sure they still want me to go, you know, get a bachelor degree yeah. or something like that. Would you ever consider going back to school? Most at any definitely, point? yeah. As soon as I could afford it, yeah. and it's not like you know, you probably do that shit online. Yeah, I rather go. I mean, you shit. Really I, I enjoy I enjoy that campus <laughs> life. I'm not gonna lie, that campus me life, too. that dorm life. <laughs> I wouldn't dorm, of course, now, but like that shit was, was fun. That was an experience. Hell yeah, that that was. I mean, shit. I recommend you know everybody, you know, go experience that college life for real. Like if you can. That shit hurt. You yeah. said you play football. Yeah, I play. I, what I, I position? Play a strong safety. Oh really? You know, as a DB. Yeah. What number you was wearing? I was wearing number nineteen in high school. Okay, so you was you was what type of safety was you like a. I was a uh, knock shit out or what? I mean, shit. I gotta, yeah, I, I'm not going for the pick. I'm are going you on YouTube? <laughs> yeah. I'm about to get. I'm about to go and look. That. Oh hell! I'm about to go do some search after this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Hey, I'm on YouTube too. If you know my real name, hey, type it in and go look. Uh, get my highlight. Oh, highlight tape some views. Yeah, shout out Tim Patricia, my boy. He he uploaded my little highlight tape on his channel. That's tight. Yeah. I never knew that. That's tight. Yeah. That's tight. I, I rock with that. Yeah, I play. I play that Loyola. Okay, that's lit. But, but yeah, I'm coming across the middle and shit. I'm a, you know I was gonna just smack you in the face. I like that. Hit him in the mouth. I'm, <laughs> that was, <laughs> hit him in the mouth. Favorite, that was my favorite type of safety. Nah, I fuck with that for sure. So like, what was it? What was it that got you into to like? one DJing and then producing like what came first yeah that came like with time like DJing shit the DJing like I really feel when I reflect on it and I mentioned like Shorty and Mauricio like I was around the turntables like family parties quinceaneras weddings yeah. like they was doing it all and still be doing it all but um like I was just that little kid that like would hang around in the DJ booth yeah. Just to you know, look, try to look cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, like I, I've been around it, and then the radio, like radio, just influenced me on like a whole nother level. Like Big Boy, Julio yeah. G, The Morning Show, yeah. like just going to school, Part 106, K Day, back and forth, and just yeah. uh, shit, DJ E Man, the Mickey Ficky mix. Like yeah. it's so many DJs that I feel like. Um, I guess inspired me to like DJ. Like I was just yeah. a big fan of the radio. I still am. Like yeah. I still got relationships with a lot of uh, radio personalities that I that I like met 
as a fan and as like a kid and yeah. as a listener like just going to different events different concerts yeah. powerhouse i have so many like yeah. different radio experiences that um that also have contributed to like me wanting to dj yeah. but um it's just like everything's just kind of like full circle for real now that i'm really thinking about it like you make yeah. you making me think about it right now so yeah. um would you consider like doing radio at some point yeah probably when i'm older yeah i yeah. feel you <laughs> I, like I, I more so like um I feel like I could see myself doing like a uh, program directing. Yeah. And just, you know. Nah, for sure. That's where the money is at too, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, shit. I could see myself, you know, having a little a little night show too yeah. when the time's right. Um, yeah. you know, break new music, I new can artists. See that for sure. I I love that shit. I love like um you know, seeing freestyles. Yeah. And like I've I've been fortunate enough to kind of see radio and like be at different radio stations like major radio stations like in LA Power 106 and yeah. then like go up to like uh, New York 105.9 and just yeah. you know um, yeah like I have a lot of respect for like radio DJs and the radio game because like yeah. it's a it's a whole different ball game and I understand like you know the restrictions and just like how it's changed and how it's evolving especially with like all the streaming and shit yeah like i really big up all the radio djs for real yeah radio djs club djs shit every dj for real because yeah. the djs is really um the ones that make shit happen yeah nah nah for sure djs are super important to the industry for sure they, they definitely need more credit people don't even realize even for me that like i feel like Radio is how I really as much how I got my start at do at doing interviews because yeah. I, I worked at power, I interned I, at power. Yeah, I, I have Ash. a little <laughs> I have a little radio uh background too. I was doing Young California radio with Charisma. Yeah. Um back in the day. So like yeah, radio I definitely got like a special place in my heart for radio. Yeah, not yeah. for sure. Radio is what made people start taking me serious. I ain't gonna lie. They're like, all right, well he is on yeah. the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not for real. Like I remember when I when I was doing that show, like yeah. Shit definitely changed for sure. Nah, for sure. As far as like, um, like the pandemic that kind of slowed you down, your know, DJing down. So you feel like you got it more yeah. your producer back. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, really, what it did was it just cleared my schedule. Like yeah. my schedule was two hundred dates a year Shit. for like two and a half, almost three years straight. Like twenty twenty would have been the third year touring. Yeah. And we I think we had like at least like 150 dates. Yeah. Um could be wrong, but like well over 100 dates for that year. Yeah. That just got wiped out. Yeah. Um so like it really cleared my schedule and yeah, like with all that time and just you know being home, like I felt like I was a away from LA for like a long time. Like I feel yeah. like I felt like in a sense um yeah, I was I was just away. Like, you know, I wasn't in the mix, but like with the COVID shit, just kind of came back, you know, got back in the studio, you know, bounced around from studio to studio, just got this working, and then, you know, shit, it looks like things is opening back up. Like, I'm seeing, yeah. like, more festivals uh, get For announced. Sure. All these, like, uh, underground LA clubs and shows yeah. is, is booming. Yeah. So, like, right now it's, like, I feel a good time um, for music. Yeah. What's what's up with the underground club scene right now? It's kind of lit. It's cool, yeah. Shit. <laughs> I was throwing my own shit. I, I've thrown a couple of events. I was about to say, yeah. I know you throwing a few. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. You I pulled know, up the one, right? I didn't know yeah. if you want to put that out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I want to say he did it because I don't want to yeah, bring it up. Yeah, nah. I mean, shit. Nah, we definitely been going up during COVID. Yeah. Um, but like the LA underground scene right now, like I've been stepping out a lot. Like yeah. I've been stepping out a lot, and that shit been um, that shit been cool. That shit yeah. been cool. Like it's popping. You know, people are just so like anxious and eager to be outside and just yeah, you know when, when the world post really on their instagram <laughs> and back. see them you know the, them bottle sparklers <laughs> yeah not for sure when the world uh opens back up that's gonna be clubbing that's gonna be the biggest thing because we have we yeah. that's one thing we really haven't been able to do like for sure facts facts yeah i mean shit the club scene like i we go back to that that the way we opened up the show with like you know dj one more i mean shit, I, that's really where i got my start before the radio yeah. it was in the club like yeah. i was really like starting to make noise that's how i met like charisma that's how i met yeah. yesi ortiz that's how i met like a lot of people like yeah. in, the, in the club scene yeah. and i was only 18 years old at yeah. the time so like um kind of jumped from from the 18 and over scene straight into like you know sneaking in to that 21 and over uh, yeah. Hollywood scene. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the club scene, that's, I mean, that's another uh, scene and another another place 
that like I really um I guess have a special place for in my heart, the club. Yeah. <laughs> and the strip club. Yeah. But yeah, I am just throwing that out there. Yeah, not, not yeah. for sure. Super impactful for sure. Uh, do you have any inspirations as far as uh production and producer? Yeah, Dr. Dre for sure. Yeah. Uh, cause like my dad was just listening to, you know, all that West Coast shit when I was uh when I was a kid. Like just you know, he would listen to a lot of West Coast shit, Cypress Hill. Yeah. Um so like yeah, the Dre's, Quicks, Battle Cats, um, I guess on the the older generation. But like now it's so many fucking producers, man. Timberland, Pharrell, Scott yeah. Storch, yeah. um, Cool and Dre. Fuck, this is just off the top of my head, like I guess from from that generation. And then definitely um people that I'm inspired by right now, like that is doing their thing, like, yeah. you know, the uh the hit boys. Yeah. You know, Metro Boomin, Sunny Digitals, yeah. 808 Mafia, yeah. like, you know, just all the producers that's really, you know, take kids, everybody just yeah. really killing put it on. Yeah, killing shit for real. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about, like, the, the L.A. music scene right now? L.A. music scene, shit. I mean, it feels um, very organic. Um, I feel like everybody working. Um, quality music. I just saw this little, like, rap caviar list. I feel like it was... It was pretty spot on. Like, yeah. Um, I feel yeah. like you see that list that that uh, that L A. Uh, yeah, the was it an L A. rap caviar list? Yeah. I think it was an L A. Yeah. Say, another guy that actually I was spoke about you with this week, T K. Mm. Oh, T K. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he sent me that list. That's how I know. About oh, he it. did. He okay. sent me that list. He was like, "We got four artists <laughs> yeah. over here." A whole like, lot of R bearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he sent me the list, but he also spoke very highly of you. Oh yeah, and he made he said, Good "Hey, shout out!" He said, "Make sure to shout me out when you got Cypress there." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, shout out TK man. Good people's good people's R Baron TK Picasso man. That yeah. was very instrumental in like this whole new LA wave and yeah. uh, shit. We I can say this like we definitely accomplished a lot together from like from when we first started um you know linking up me and TK been knowing each other like maybe seven eight years now i met him when i was doing um radio with charisma up at young california yeah. and he was managing raven servino um so from then on now like it's just been a whole lot of shit that's like a whole that might be like a whole separate podcast in itself <laughs> like with, that's what with, he told me <laughs> with him with him here <laughs> he was told he was like man he was like you don't even know we yeah, got history, history. Yeah, nah, i we, was like we got we got some history for sure I kicked with him for like three hours the other day, and I was yeah, really was I mean, chopping game. Like, yeah, yeah, it'd be, it be sure. like that, especially when you're in the <laughs> studio. It's, I mean, shit, I've learned a lot from from him, him and P for real. Yeah. Um, and then just like, just seeing, even even like uh, just being around, right, being around a group that was signed. Like, I learned a lot because I'm yeah. I'm still independent, so I yeah. saw how like a major label moved. You know yeah. these LA artists, yeah. and like I saw what they did, everything from yeah. like you know creatively, the visuals, yeah. um, as uh, rollout plans and and whatnot. So it's like definitely a lot of game that I'm learning, soaked yeah. up just from being around. So like I'm yeah. definitely very uh, thankful for that because yeah. like that's a whole lot. That's that's a lot of motherfucking game that I yeah. I, I was able to um, be around and, and soak up. Yeah. I, I, I gotta ask you this. Uh, I'm from the Bay, you know that. I, yeah. LA, I've seen you. You're a Raider LA. fan, right? Yeah, for okay, sure. Yeah, Shout yeah, out to the Raiders. Yeah. How, how you still a Raider fan? Hell yeah. I've been meeting, I've been meeting some people recently that, that switched up because yeah, of the Vegas up, shit. Yeah. Nah, that shit weird to me. I love Vegas. I'm still rocking. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> closer to exactly, us. Exactly. That's Oakland. Like, close. <laughs> that that five freeway was boring. Like the five for sure. Since was I was a boring. kid, bro. Since I could even remember going up to Oakland, I just like I was always excited for the games, but I just knew that motherfucking that, five that was like the long, to me that was always like the longest car drive. It is ever. I don't. I don't. Fly I've done. Home. I've done. We've we've done it like on tour. We we've done some some crazy drives like um like uh twelve hours and shit. So that yeah. looked like. But when that's, I was a no, kid, that's, that's, that, that's bad. Yeah, twelve hours yeah. is just not good. <laughs> when I was a kid, hey, when I was a kid though, yeah, that shit that shit felt like the longest drive ever. But nah, um, that that drive is long. I don't even drive it no more unless I desperately have to. Yeah. Well, you big time now, the innovators. <laughs> Catch that flight. I'm first class West, too. I'm, out sure, of I'm sure. I'm sure. Hey, hey, Burbank. Burbank be having the little, you know, the yeah. little flights. Yeah, for sure. Want to yeah, get yeah. away? Hella quick. <laughs> Ain't no LX be too too much. Uh, yeah. Traffic and shit. Yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of airports, but why? 
I mean, it's just I hate waiting in line. So like, I bought that clear shit and oh, you got clear. Yeah, I got but then no, just check. yeah, that's even better because you don't got to take your shoes off, right? Yeah, yeah. Clear, you got to take your shoes off. Yeah, yeah. I wow. like just that shit is annoying to me. Like taking your nah, shoes off. Oh, then I, I be traveling with two laptops too, so I gotta take both oh laptops out God. every <laughs> single fucking time. Like and I, you get pre-check, you don't gotta take laptops out for real. That's why I got yeah. pre-check. Just see if like it, it's they it's, finesse me because I was like, oh, not clear better than pre-check. That I'm like, whatever. I just yeah, gotta cut this line. Is, I've been trying. I think to the way that got up. the way that got me was like I was like damn near running late, and they're like, oh, you, I don't know, your first time, you know, free. I don't know, like. Just signed up, yeah, like that. <laughs> cut the line. It definitely saves a lot of time, but yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Airports, I mean, shit. I feel you for sure. Safety first, so. Yeah, for sure. I, I understand. I was hella bad when I just went to Miami and I tried to get, I was trying to get, I was running late to my flight and the line, the terminal I went to said they don't got pre check. Uh, I was like, what the yeah. fuck am I paying It'd be for? like that too, though. <laughs> As, I think it's been a couple spots where, you know, they like, didn't, didn't have clear. clear. Yeah. Nah, so. it's just whack. Yeah. Um, but what I, what I was going to say, that the LA music scene, though, know, like, I feel like y'all killing it. I feel like LA is a place where over time, y'all just start to accumulate hella big st like stars in y'all city. Like, oh, yeah. Right now, I feel like we got some stars. You feel real. me? Like, I, I mean, just like, sure. th that is following. Shit, cause like, yeah, going back to that list that TK sent you. Yeah, uh, who was on there? It was like Blast, Kaylin, Draco, was Draco, over there. yeah. Um, uh, they put Draco first, I think. So yeah. Draco, Blast, Kaylin, Rucci, Bino, um, was Chike, Chike, over there? Chike and Jay. Um, I think they put Rambo and somebody else that. that Rambo's hot right now. Yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, How you feel? You you like the list? You think you think you, you you cool with the list? Did they put they didn't put blue bucks? Okay. okay, okay. Yeah. They they for sure. Shout out to them. They, they I love those guys. Yeah. Um. <laughs> who else? Not nah, those. Who's missing? I don't. I'm... Kayla was on there for sure. Kayla yeah. was on there. I mean, um, that was hit. That like that. that I thought it, was it was a good, good list. list. I feel like they finally like somebody finally got something right. Yeah. Even though it, it, it happened like four years later, but yeah. it feels good that like I mean shit, everything's all about timing. Yeah, and um, I learned that like I'd say I guess within the last two three years because I've always been like so anxious to like drop shit, push it out, but like yeah. now I, I really understand timing and just you know rollouts and all that shit. What do you think helps you have a better understanding of that? Just having a good team, shit, yeah. management, Chris Munoz, Christy Kim. Rosecrans Vic, yeah. Catch Twenty Two, um, shit, just you know, solid homies too, kind of yeah. keep you uh, level headed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all of that. You got your own label, Catch Twenty Two. Um, yeah. Why was it important for you to to take that step and to make that move? Shit, ownership, man. You know, studying the game, and just yeah, just you know, having something that's yours, yeah. um, owning something, and. And really, like, Catch-22, like, it's me, it's mine. Yeah. So, I just felt like it was necessary to have something that was mine. And, like, definitely, like, I'm just thinking long-term, like, yeah. you know, something that's going to grow over time. Yeah. And then something that's going to um, lead back a legacy. Yeah. No, I, I think I think it's super dope. Why the name? Catch-22? Well, yeah. it really came from this song that I did with G. Perico called Million Dollar Mission. And, like, this was, like, one of my first placements that I was, like, excited about yeah because like i remember being at my mama crib summer it was like summertime you know shirt off i'm making i'm making beats in the kitchen for real and i sent <laughs> and i sent and i sent him like this was around the time i think like a good night in the ghetto yeah. was out so i sent him some shit that i felt like it was like some bass shit like yeah. like some bay kamaya type shit and he hit me like he called me back like this shit is weak Damn. So I was like, damn. <laughs> I was not yeah, expecting yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, shit. This was my shit. Yeah, it wasn't hitting the way. It, it, I mean, it, it's hitting now. I feel, yeah. but um, this was like 2016, maybe 2017. Yeah. But um, but yeah, he sent me back. All right, so he, he hit me like, yo, this shit weak, whatever. And then like, all right, I, the next beat I cook up was this million dollar mission beat. Yeah. And um, yeah, like uh. I think he hopped on it right away. He was at the yeah. crib cooking up. He sent it back. And the title of the file was Catch-22. 
and at that time I didn't know what a catch twenty two was. So yeah. I was just like, you know, even I hit him back like, why'd you name it catch twenty two? Because the song was not finished. Yeah. So like it didn't have a hook or anything. It just had like a verse. Yeah. And then um, you know, went on Google. Google Cash 22, and then I was like, oh, this is relatable. And number 22 is, like, really symbolic. That was, that was my uncle's number. Okay. Um, so, like, just everybody just kind of knew him because he played ball, too. He played football, and that, yeah. was, that was his number. Yeah. Um, so, deuce, deuce, 22. So, like, it just it just really stuck. It hit. I felt like it, it was kind of meant to be from that point on. So, yeah. yeah. Nah, I think I think that's dope. Uh, how did you feel when he told you the beat was trash? Did it, did it hurt your confidence? Or Definitely anything? not. Shit, <laughs> I, I be needing to hear that shit. Cause really? Hell okay. yeah, hell yeah. I I feel like um, I play sports, so like I I I guess with sports, different coaches they prepare you for different shit in life. Yeah, like, for sure. Um, that's, that's and facts, then like for sure. yeah, <laughs> shout out Coach P, shout out all my coaches, man. Coach yeah. B, Pop Warner, it's it's a lot of coaches that I feel like uh, definitely have prepared me for like moments that I've been experiencing. Yeah. But um, criticism, like and taking criticism, whether it's constructive or someone just talking shit, like you got to be able to you know have that thick skin and just yeah. move forward. Yeah. But um, like, but, you're but yeah, correct. <laughs> like uh, when he told me that shit, I just made a better beat, yeah. and then. <laughs> That's I mean to me to yeah. me that's like what that's a that's a classic record Million Dollar yeah. Mission G Perico produced by Cypress yeah. um I think that was on the Shit Don't Stop project too so that's like that's a that's like a legendary G Perico project yeah uh, what are you using to make your beats um I'm using Ableton and Logic so I'll be scoring like all my melodies in Logic and then do my drums in Ableton yeah yeah uh, would you say it was hard to get people beats like was that ever like a hard thing for you to do? Because I feel like I've had people. I've been people have complained to me about it. Like, man, it's just it's hard to get these beats to people. You feel me? Yeah. Like, you you've had success at that. Was it easy? Like, would you say, like, I wouldn't say it was easy because I feel like when you say it's easy, it just yeah, it, nothing in life is easy. Yeah. Um, but what helped was the way I kind of set myself up for it. Like, I set myself up. As a DJ first, I be letting everybody know like I'm a DJ first. Yeah. But I've never attached that DJ name, that DJ title to my name, like yeah. DJ Cypress Moreno. It's yeah. always just been Cypress or Cypress Moreno. Yeah. Um. So me being a DJ first definitely made it easier for me because, shit, I just knew so many artists. Um. Exactly. I was in the clubs. And artists would be, you know, hey, I got a record. You know, I was that DJ. That's you know, all right, shit. You know, fuck it. You know the tempo, or yeah. you know, drop that shit right away. It just, you know, I felt like I was doing what DJs are supposed to do, and that's yeah. like, you know, break records. Yeah. Um. But yeah, being a DJ definitely helped me. Um. With the with, with getting my beats out, like especially when I first started producing, because I already yeah. had like relationships with a gang of artists, and it was just easy from from then on. Yeah. No, that's tight. That's tight. Now I fuck with that for sure. What do you consider yourself? Cause I, mean, you do many things. Like, yeah, you're, I'm like you're more than you you're like an I, artist. I mean, shit, you, got, I, you featured on tracks. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you producing <laughs> on tracks. You got your own tag. That's you a got good, your own label. Like, yeah, yeah, that's a good what, question. What do you consider yourself? A uh, mogul. Yeah, shit. I like that. Yeah, a mogul, I like, like a legend. Definitely consider myself a, a young OG already. Yeah. Shit. Um, I just celebrated. My 27th birthday, so yeah. like it's kind of yeah, I'm feeling old. So, uh, nah, I definitely um, shit, I feel like, <clears throat> shit, I feel like Cypress. Yeah. I, I know, I know what else to tell you. <laughs> right now, in this moment, I feel like Cypress. Yeah, now, my, our mamas, you killing it for sure. No, I appreciate and, uh, that for real. Yeah, for real. I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing you grow in the little times. Mm -hmm. I know, I said that's like three years of knowing. Yeah, about you. I'm like, God damn, like you've been going crazy. Um, what what has your experience been in the music business? Would you say it's been like how how would you describe it? I feel like I've definitely paid my dues, and um, I've experienced a little bit of everything, ups and downs, smiles yeah. and frowns. Yeah. Um, shit, that's a good ass. You got some good ass questions, bro. Like you really, you I'm over here sitting, really thinking about like the shit you asking me. Um, but yeah. I mean, good experiences are bad experiences. Like everything that come with it, you know. Shit, yeah. lawyer up. Yeah, not nah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think that's it, definitely. It took, me, it took me time to like really. Um, it took me years. Like I, I was doing a lot of the shit I was doing by myself. Yeah. 
I'd say like the first like yeah like five years of my career, um, it was just really just me, you know. Uh, my girl had um, made some business cards and I was just about handing it. that. Yeah. So many people have my motherfucking number. Like it's like a gift and a curse. It's a catch. Yeah, no, it's yeah. a catch twenty two. Like so many people have. My, I was just you know. Yeah, shit. <laughs> I, f- I feel like I didn't been through it all for real. Yeah, nah, nah. I, I, I think I think it's tight, but I feel like with you, the way you got it and you got it out the mud for real. So you you can really appreciate it. You can really yeah. anyone who knows your story has no choice to respect it, or they gonna look stupid. Like yeah. you got it out the mud. Like, Man, I appreciate you, you set that. Set yourself up to pre- make it happen. Nah, you feel I pre- me? That's some real shit right there. I appreciate that for real, cause like I really do. I know that. I know, like, and I, w- I won't say it, but, like, the fact that you said it, yeah, it, 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 like, I'll reiterate that. Like, yeah. yeah, I really got this shit out the mud, and I'm still getting out the mud. Like, yeah. still fully independent, 100%. Yeah. Like, everything you see is just, like, me and, and, and the team. Yeah. Nah, nah, I rock with it. Yeah. Tell me, what was your favorite Shoreline Mafia moment? I favorite, know you had a lot. Yeah, Shoreline Mafia <laughs> moment. Let me see. Um, shit. Probably uh, London, yeah. Probably like our second London show. Yeah, they sold that bitch out. Shit, we sold that bitch out, and just I was on stage, drunk as fuck. <laughs> just like y'all ain't gonna hear nothing but this LA shit. Yeah, and I opened up for like a whole hour, and I'm playing for real. Just, I'm playing like Kaylin right with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like just LA shit, just yeah. vintage and adventurous, and just whatever was like you know. New and fresh from the city um, yeah. back then, like I yeah. felt like I had a really good set and um, a really good show in London, just like shit. And then I was even able to like you know play like some of the the unreleased shit, um, like the bitches record, yeah, one take J and Ojeezy, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean it's it's a lot of moments, but like that one right now just kind of came to mind. Just yeah. that show, like that was like a, a legendary ass show, like yeah. to be so far from LA and then. You know, rocking, yeah, <laughs> no, nah, and they they was really rocking. That's know? surreal. I thought, like yeah, hands I'm, hands up type of shit. Like it, they was really fucking with the LA shit. Like yeah. I played like a whole hour of LA shit, just nothing but LA shit. Rochi, one take, yeah, Chai, everybody. Like <laughs> I feel yeah. like I, when you're in that moment and you're experiencing that, are you thinking like? That most people in their life will never experience anything like this. Like, do you, are you fully taking in this moment, or nah, are you not like, enjoying it? Nah, I, I, <laughs> all right. That's the thing that I like looking back because, like, I play so many fucking shows. Yeah, like so many shows. Like to this day, I be having just pe- people hitting me up. Like I was in Montana or I was in New Zealand. Like yeah. two days ago, like someone hit me like I saw you when you was in New Zealand. I was like, shit. Um. That's crazy. And, like, I never really, like, <laughs> nah, I don't think I ever was on stage and, like, took the moment in. I was just going. Like, I, I was just, I, I think that's I was crazy. Just, yeah, I was just doing that <laughs> shit. And then, like, I mean, more than half of the time, we was turned up, too. Yeah, so yeah. it was like, you really, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I, something I've been trying to tell myself more is, like, and embrace the moment, enjoy the moment yeah, that no, you're that's experiencing. Something, that's something that, like, I've now, like, Cause like I mentioned, you know, I'm get, I feel like I'm getting older too. Yeah. So like I'm really appreciating all of shit, all the all the moments like outside of the music too. Just yeah. like with family and just everyday life. You know what I'm saying with with loved ones. Like you know shit, yeah. going to the barber shop and yeah. hitting my grandma's house after like yeah. little shit like that. Nah, mama, you gotta you gotta cherish all the moments. For Most sure. definitely, it's a crazy definitely. world out here. Yeah, um, the funnest city you toured. Funnest city, funnest city. Damn, shit, it probably like Amsterdam was fun. Why was it fun? Shit, it was just a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm still trying to go there. Yeah, that shit different. Um, <laughs> I'm still. Oh no, no, Australia though. For like, real, that whole oh. Australia tour, hands down, like what? one of the best experiences. Like I got so many different touring experiences, like so many like different stories too. But like uh, Australia was like everything, bro. Like from the quality of life, like, it, yeah. it's just different. As soon as you get off the plane, it just look different. It feel different. It smell yeah. different. Like, everything. Everything. I is, gotta go there. Then. Nah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it was a good like, time. Like, I think yeah. we went uh, around New Year's time, December. Yeah, actually, I celebrated New, Year, New Year's, was it, yeah, 2019 going into 2020? I don't know. Yeah. Years fucked up. But um, I celebrated New Year's over there. 
So like back home it's you know wintertime over there bro summertime like 90 degrees like you could hit the beach to have some of the most beautiful beaches like it, it, it was a vibe yeah of course i mean there is some controversy with the group i mean what the the, the group breaking up like I, I, how does that how did that affect you directly and also how do you feel about it how did the group did affect it, me directly yeah, breaking did, up yeah um shit. like the people expect you to pick a side, like I always wonder yeah, how it I, is with producers, like especially someone yeah. like you, who's so <laughs> you 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 like you got you you have a lot of impact. Like yeah. are people saying you need to pick a side in the situation. Or? <clears throat> nah, nobody's ever really like said I had to pick a side, but I feel like um shit with me, bro. Like I I really don't have any problems with like anybody I could really think of. Yeah, um, just in general, yeah. like even when 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 I, I saw them go through that, like. I mean, shit. It damn near was, damn near was inevitable. Yeah. It kind of was like I saw. I definitely saw it coming. Yeah. But um, see, at the end of the day, like we all grown men. Like, yeah. It is what it is. You just got to keep pushing. Yeah. Yeah. No, not for sure. As far as like, just being a producer in general, like the people, when people expect the producer to take a side, like. Like, yeah, yeah, all right, it, 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 it comes down to politics, bro. Yeah. Cause like, I, like it's politics in LA right now. Where yeah. like, yeah, I'm a producer and I'm a DJ and I'm making music with like, you know, this person and that person and this person and that person don't get along with each other. But yeah. like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm yeah, a producer. Really I got, yeah, you. I got, yeah, for real. <laughs> so it's definitely people that like have that either be feeling some type of way or be coming yeah. at me feeling some type of way but uh at the end of the day like i feel like everybody that knows me knows what i'm about and they know yeah. like you know i'm about this music shit yeah. and like that's simply like what it is it's it's music it's business and then shit mm -hmm. this this is my life like this yeah. is what i'm passionate about yeah, so like, i'm not here to be i don't yeah it I, really, it's, it's not your problem I, all of that I shit do the same thing. <laughs> i mean <laughs> <laughs> it, it's really that simple, but yeah. like people really make shit out to so be difficult. way bigger than yeah. what it is. Yeah. No, I just think it's funny, and I, I wanted to ask you that because even with me, people would be like, "You interview two guys who don't get along." I'm like, "Bro, I met them people that one day. Like, I don't really know them. We just, I said, this is my job. This is what I do right now." Like, yeah, because like it could get tricky with like journalists or yeah. Like, yeah, interviewing and asking questions about beef, you know what I'm saying? And then yeah. now you, you know, yeah, it's headlines or, you know, you you title shit. I mean, we got to look out for our brand at the end of the day, too. Yeah. So, like, if something's beneficial towards a brand, I can see what... I'm not really, you know, big on, like, clickbait and shit like that, but yeah. not, like, so-and-so speaks on the beef with so-and-so. Like, yeah. that's a headline, and yeah. that's what you, you know, you spoke about. You're not choosing any size or, or yeah. whatnot, and, you know, you get straight to it. But, yeah. nah, I, I mean, shit, man... I'm I'm just doing me for real. Yeah. Like I'm I like I'm, I'm in I'm in a I'm in a great position right now. Yeah. Like I'm I'm very uh satisfied with where I'm at right now as yeah. far as like just uh shit in life and music. Yeah. Um as a DJ, like I'm very I'm very uh I damn near feel like if I were to reti retire tomorrow, like shit, like I put up, you know, some numbers on the scoreboard. Nah, for sure. De definitely as a DJ, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. And then trans you know, now it's it's really taking on that that producer hat because I yeah. feel like shit I I ain't done shit in the producer world for real yeah just you know because I'm all the people that I'm looking up to like they on some whole other shit so yeah. it's like you know it's, 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 really it's, knock some doors down yeah it's levels to the shit for real uh, what is your process when it comes to making a beat making a beat shit man all right it varies it really varies like. Recently, I've been cooking up from scratch a lot. Uh, I've been trying to cook cook up from scratch and just, you know, whoever I'm in the studio with, like, just, you know, blank canvas, just yeah. cook from scratch. But, like, um, yeah, it really varies artist to artist. Like, when I was on the road and I was touring, that's that's where I made, like, the, the T Grizzly beat. Yeah. Um, because I was on the road and I was doing collaborations. Shout out Omega. And, um... Yeah, on the, on the, when I was on the road, I was doing a lot of collaborations, you know, a lot of just, you know, going through my email just with producers I fuck with and just headphones on the bus type shit or hit a studio after um after the show type shit and just yeah. cooking up. But, yeah, I, it really varies for real. Like, yeah. right now, I feel like um executive producing a lot of shit. Yeah. And I'm bringing in a lot of the right um pieces to the puzzle. Yeah. Like, 
I have no problem collaborating and like you know I play sports all my life so like teamwork make the dream work for yeah, real for like sure. so um executive producing what is that what does that mean exactly like executive producing man like, putting all the pieces like kind of like the coach yeah like <laughs> on, on some Phil Jackson like yeah, Phil, Phil Jackson, Jackson. <laughs> yeah I'm you know shit I want 11 rings or yeah. however many rings he got yeah. but yeah on some like yeah, the, I mean the coach. Yeah. Um, shit. Sometimes it could be the offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. Yeah. Shit. But um, just really uh, I'm yeah, just collaborating, bringing people together. It's, it's it's funny because that's another thing TK told me. He said Cypress is very good at putting the pieces of the puzzle together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like, he's a curator, and I was like, I was like, all right, like you, you, I'm like, I said this is, I said everything you're saying is great because. We, nah, we did that for real. Like we we put the pieces to the puzzle. Like yeah. from like, I remember just like, uh, who was it? Like Ron Ron and Jug and yeah. like bring like bringing them over to like TK's little. He had like this little spot in downtown. Like just it was a lot of it was a lot of a lot of that. Like yeah. I guess melting pots. Like yeah, um, yeah all of that shit yeah. from like also like people. Um, people don't know. I mean, some most people do, but like, I didn't tour not only just with Shoreline Mafia, but yeah. I toured with Rucci, For with sure. Kalen, with Chite, with Jay. Yeah, like I, like, I DJ. Yeah. Like I was on stage yeah. DJing. Everybody set, and um, so I say like, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of um, a lot of putting the pieces to the puzzle. Yeah, that's that's going on over the years. That like you know. Yeah. Let's talk about your new single out right now. Oh, yeah, shit. Featuring Draco. Tell us about the record. Like. Yeah. Um, up the score. Draco the Ruler. AD. Big Sad. Yeah. And shit, we just knocked it out. Like, maybe like a month ago, shot the video already. Yeah. Uh, shot by Tevo Leron. Oh, he go crazy for sure. Yeah, Shout out to yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's only right. I had to call <laughs> up. For, th for this one, I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me give uh, Tevo a call. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... But nah, it's a it's a street record. Um, knocked it out at Legend Only. I, I gotta plug everybody. Yeah. Le Legend, shout out Legends Only Studio, big pun. Yeah. Cause he uh he actually hit me that day, like that morning, like, hey bro, like, I want you to get in the studio with AD. And I was like, hell yeah, like, what you doing tonight? And I I don't think he expected me to like. He was like, uh, shit, tonight, shit, let me see. Yeah. Um, but nah, he got us in the studio, and so I I let him know like, hey, you know, I've been working on this project. Me and Big Sad got like this 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 project that's crazy. Yeah. It's, um, in the works and he's like bring him through and um the way the studio set up like he just moved he like right at the front so he kind of like if his door is open you can see everybody that come in and come out yeah and you know it was a it was kind of packed in the studio so i guess he seen draco in the um in the parking lot he told him pull up you know he told you know he told him you know ad cypress big sad up in there pull up and like Drago came in he knocked two records out and yeah. then um up the score just this is the first one we put it out you yeah. um, know Shit, it's, it, it's produced by uh, myself, E Bless Me, and The Fool on the Beat. Yeah. Um, they're both from the Bay Area, too. Oh, uh, for real? Yeah. That's or, I mean, is Hollister considered a Bay? Not, Hollister, uh, California? I would, I would, I, I'm would. i not sure where that is, so yeah, I'm going to yeah, say yeah. probably not up the rip, but it's, <laughs> it's North well, It's, I mean, North it's like five, four or five hours up north for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's North Cal for sure, so shout out. <laughs> now, the Bay, the Bay has some producers. Yeah, I for be, sure. Yeah. Um, I met E, e Bless Me on like... Um, Instagram, he tapped in. I seen like he was working with Lil Yace, rest in peace, Lil Yace. Yeah, rest in peace, and then, Lil like, Yace for um, sure. And then since then, like he's been down to LA, been in my studio. We be cooking up like yeah. damn near weekly for show. So yeah. like, um, it's just dope to uh to be able to like you know put out these records and yeah. just kind of see you know the process because that beat that was a that was just like a. Really, Drago was on some load some shit up, but like I had played like a couple other beats, but like this beat in particular, like I think I damn near played it on accident. He was yeah. like, "No, nah, no, nah, go back to that one," and then you know just pull yeah, down. I it. Yeah, now, that's tight. Um, I, I, it's funny because I just I think fucking uh, Thizzler posted. Drago said he was the the biggest rapper on the West Coast or something. He said recently, <laughs> "How you feel about that?" Yeah, I mean, shit, he got the Drake feature. Yeah, I think he is the biggest rapper on the West Coast right now. Like, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I, I, I gotta, I mean, I gotta agree. Like, like right now, <laughs> right now, like today. Uh, like, yeah, he is for sure. I mean, shit, I, the him and Blast to me are the are, oh yeah, are the yeah, best yeah, yeah. On the to me on but the I'm, West right saying, now, like, right now, like yeah, yeah like for sure. 
got to look at the numbers. Got to look yeah. at the score. <laughs> <laughs> up the score. Up the score. We finna up the score. But yeah, I mean, shit. Yeah, just you know, respectable numbers for sure. Yeah. You know, like uh, monthly listeners on Spotify. I be looking at all this shit. Like, yeah. and and I know Draco does too, cause I be seeing him. You know, not talk shit, but he just speaking the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever he be, you know, you know yeah. Whenever he be, <laughs> the truth hurts. <laughs> not. <laughs> hey, the numbers don't lie though. For real, yeah. like he really doing his shit. Like, yeah. and uh, man. Um, shit, I'm just, you know, thankful that he, he blessed his record, you know, yeah. just went straight into the booth, freestyled it. Um, yeah. he did actually two records like that too. So yeah. definitely expect some more, some more shit. I, I did like a couple other records with him yeah. that's, that's um, that I'm, that I'm excited about. And then yeah. like this, this is my first time really kind of seeing him in the studio work yeah. and, and do this like punch, like I've seen so many artists punch in, but like, yeah. I don't remember like seeing, I from from what I remember, he would like you know, write on his phone or just rap off off the lyrics off his phone and shit. But like seeing him punch in and shit, he's still talking that shit. Yeah, right. that's hard. I like I like how like it happened hella organically. Like yeah, that. <laughs> I, man, the way it happened for real, and it's the timing thing too. Like yeah. the timing of shit. I like it was inevitable. Like. You know, we in L.A. We, yeah, we, like, we had already crossed paths. I had, yeah. I had already shot him some beats and shit, too. Yeah. So, like, um, but, yeah, that was, like, uh, the first time that we, we was really in the studio, too. Yeah. So, I was, like, you know, I just think, I think that's hard. playing beats and shit. I think, I think yeah, I, I, y'all was bound to collab regardless because, yeah. I mean, I feel, I you feel, the man behind the L.A. sound. Yeah, like, come I mean, on. Shit, like, bro, what, like, it happened organically, though. You got to appreciate that. Look, you feel me? I I remember being in Paris, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking, like, damn, what the fuck am I going to play? Like, I'm in Paris. Everybody over here speak French. Um, You know, I'm looking at the crowd. It's it's a pretty diverse crowd and shit. Paris is a pretty diverse city. And um, and I'm walking up to connect my laptop, right? I don't yeah. think I've... I, don't, I, I haven't told him this story, him or Greedo, Free Greedo. Yeah. But, like, as soon as I'm walking up in Paris, it's like a 300, 350 cap venue sold yeah. out, right? So it's, it's already packed out. I just hear someone in the crowd say, free Draco, free Greedo. And I was like, oh, shit. Damn. Like, right <laughs> off the bat, I was like, I play out the slums. Like, yeah. with both of them on it. Like, that's what I what I opened. I, I think I opened up my set with uh, Mafia Business first and then play out the slums or something yeah. like that. But, um, but no, nah, I mean, shit, that's that's like a, another full circle moment for real. Because yeah. I remember um, DJing his first show yeah. at the observatory and just kind of seeing, like, his first show, all right, so DJ, his first show and Shoreline's first show. Two yeah. totally different crowds, two yeah. totally different atmospheres, two yeah. totally different set lists. Yeah. Like, I remember being with Draco in the studio trying to figure out the set list. He didn't give a fuck, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, like, even with the Shoreline shit, I, like, I didn't really know their music from that first show. So, yeah. like, you know, I, you know, I just wanted to be as prepared and, you know, I mean, shit. He he killed that first show though. We yeah. just kind of we kind of came up with the set list. He yeah. definitely definitely didn't remember it when we was on stage. Yeah. But like you know, every song went up for real. Yeah, that's hard. I yeah. think that's hard. I, I think it's, I think it's super tight though to to to, to hear your side of the story because it's like you, you you've been in so many moments. You feel yeah, me? Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's these, it's, honestly, it's these moments that I, I'm just now thinking about because. Cause of this conversation, which is yeah. crazy, it's yeah. dope. It's dope to like, like you know. a historian for sure. Like, <laughs> and years, ten years from now, yeah. people are gonna want to hear all your stories. Yeah, for sure. yeah. Uh, that's tight. You also produced on uh, Kalen's new album, right? Yeah, yeah. Shout out Kalen, man. FCE, you know, two for real, two. No love featuring Mozzie, produced yeah. by that's myself just too. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Myself, E Bless Me, and Peyote on the guitar. Man, yeah, that's a. You know, Rock Nation place, man. I'm proud yeah. of that shit. Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> um, I I wanted to ask you, as far as the producers cut on a song, does it is it always the same or does it vary? It varies for sure. Everything varies. Yeah. Um, but shit, like whenever I be working with with you know, the homies, we split everything even. Yeah. For real. Yeah. I've I've never uh, been in a situation where it's been different. So. Yeah. Um, but not nah, yeah, everything varies. From like royalty rate to um advances yeah. and like just everything publishing like yeah. it's some it's some uh, contracts I've seen where I was like oh shit like I'm I'm getting more I mean you know I don't like speaking on it but like yeah, yeah you got to know the business yeah it, it varies for it's sure it's important for people to to really dive in and figure that side out for sure uh, 
But show for sure. If you got your own label, clearly people can see that you about the business for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, shit, really good team, good lawyer, man. Chris yeah. Munoz, Ben McLean, right now. Yeah, that's who I'm rocking with. So. Yeah. What are your hobbies outside of music? Outside of music, sports, yeah. like football was my first love. I played yeah. Pop Warner when I was like seven. Santa Monica Vikings. Um, side note, I play with one of Suge Knight's sons. For real? <laughs> yeah, Pop Warner. That's that's crazy. hip hop shit too, right? That's like, yeah. <laughs> Cause I, I just like two days ago, I just seen like a, a he. I don't know how many kids Suge has, but I like one of his. I think it was like the other Suge. Like it was it was a dope interview that I just yeah. seen. Um, but um, but yeah, like nah, hobbies, sports. Um, that's what, like definitely my my first love. But yeah. uh, shit, what else? That's pretty much it. Sports, music, family. Yeah. Um, no video games or nothing? Nah, I'm... I thought you, I see you playing FIFA. Man. Did I see that? I be getting my ass whooped. <laughs> yeah, I'm you so, didn't see that. But that yeah. isn't like a hobby. I, yeah. You know, that's you at just, the studio. You just fucking around know. having some fun. All right, all I right. had, I had like... My dad did buy me like, you know, a PlayStation, and Xbox growing up and shit. So, yeah. And like, I would play him just to play against him. Yeah. But like, you know, it, shit. Video games... I I was a, the type of kid that would rather be outside playing, I don't know, cops yeah. and robbers and on a yeah. bike or just, you know, doing some shit that I got that you. was outdoors. <laughs> Do you believe in aliens or ghosts? Um, shit. That's a good question because I feel like I got an uncle that, like, is trying to convince me that they're both real. <laughs> 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 but um, I definitely, I mean, shit, man. I, I, I'd say, yeah. Both to both? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for okay. sure. Right. It's some other shit out there, for sure. We not the only ones here. Yeah. <laughs> if you could pick yourself to be any animal in the world, what would it be and why? Damn, probably like a lion. Yeah. Um, and he like the king of the jungle or something. Yeah. Um, or like an eagle. Yeah. Lion, eagle. Shit. What advice would you give to up and coming producers? Up and coming producers, yeah, or, or and DJs, and DJs. somebody who actually somebody who wants to do what you do. Damn, be yourself, uh, work hard, and shit. Don't take no for an answer. I like that. I like that. Yeah. You've, you you you've taken a lot of no's in your career. They didn't they didn't deter you. Uh, a couple. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely taking a couple. Or just yeah. you know. I feel like uh, you're going to come across people that don't believe in you or don't believe in your vision. Yeah. And you're going to come across people that don't understand your vision. So yeah. it's like a difference between someone that doesn't understand it and someone that doesn't believe in it. Yeah. And someone that is willing to understand it. Yeah. So, like, yeah, don't don't get discouraged. Like, you know, every, yeah. everything going uh, gonna to happen the way it's supposed to happen. Everything going to play out the way it's supposed to play out. So just, Did just keep going. Did you ever fight through that? Like, what, have, have you ever had low moments where you, you might have not had the confidence? Yeah, definitely. I feel like everybody does. Moments where he's like, damn, am, am I, like, am I doing the right shit? Yeah. Um, should I keep going? Yeah. Should I, you know? I mean, I I really don't have, no, like, when I jumped into this, I feel like my plan B was always going to be go back to school, which, yeah. like, it, I guess that's like a... Yeah, that's like a, a realistic plan B. Like yeah. school is all, you know, education is always going to be there, whether it's yeah. online, like you mentioned, or just yeah. like, you know, that. but like, I guess that would be my plan B. Yeah. Um, I ended up actually going to school for like a music production. That's hard. At, at the LA Recording School and shit. That's tight. That's yeah. tight. Um, a lot of people don't know that, but I just throw that out there. And, um, but yeah, like it, it's been times where like, you know, yeah, just kind of look up and you're like, damn. What's next? Yeah. Where'd I go? Um, but nah, like you just gotta thug it. Yeah, keep figuring this shit out. Ten toes <laughs> down. The biggest lesson you learned in the industry. Biggest lesson, man. Damn shit. I don't know if this is the biggest lesson, but I mean like don't expect people to do shit for you. Yeah. I mean, I, I really don't expect people to do shit for me. Like I I'd rather take matters into my own hands and and get shit done. Yeah. Because if I do it that way, I know it's going to get shit done. You know, That's how I am, for right, sure. The, the right way, correctly. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, plenty of lessons. I, yeah, I wouldn't say that's the biggest one, but that's definitely a lesson. Yeah. Uh, more lessons that I've learned from yeah. being in the music industry. Shit. Yeah. Um, be professional, be on time. 
Mm. You were no, that's advice. Shout out, shout out, shout out. That's advice. <laughs> shout that's not a lesson. That's up. advice. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> shit, yeah. Being on time is some good advice. I've had people show up an hour late. I'm like, God damn. Yeah, What's I mean, rapper on? time. I mean, yeah. Man, it's, been a, it's been a couple times where I'm like, all right, I'm a rapper today. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm 30 minutes late. My yeah. bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, do you have any goals for this year? For this year? Yeah. Um, just put out more music, man. Put out more music, more music videos. Um, grow the label. Yeah. Definitely want to grow the label. Like, I, from. <clears throat> The moment the pandemic started, which was in 2020, right? March of 2020. Yeah. It was my birthday weekend, right? Yeah. I started off with like zero monthly listeners on Spotify. My yeah. first time ever dropping a record. I put out two records. I put out a bilingual record with FIFA. Yeah. Called Bad Bad. And then I put out a, a record uh, with Once AJ and um, AZ Chike on the yeah. bitch. From that moment to now, I feel like it's just been all about like growth and progression and just growing the label. Yeah. And I'm seeing these numbers and I'm seeing like, you know, my reach and I'm seeing like how different songs, you know, did, you know, just got the rollout right and, you know, everything. Every, I mean, shit. DJ Pax, I just sent out like 100 yeah. emails, bro. Like, yeah. I didn't even think I was going to get this type of feedback. Like, I just posted yeah. on my story. Drop your email if you a DJ. I'm sending out DJ packs. Yeah. Before you know it, I had like over a hundred people hit me. Like, yeah. and I individual. Like, and I sent. That's influence right there. <laughs> hey, bro. So look, it had me. I I was scratching my head because I was like, damn, I should have done this shit a long time ago. Yeah. But not um. Man, shit. Yeah, just definitely this year I want to grow as a person, as a businessman. Um, and then definitely look look into like uh. Other, I guess, business ventures outside of music, like, like as far as what, like stocks or cryptocurrency. Nah, or I'm like not. That? I'm not really too big on that. Um, yeah. I'm not really too educated on that for real. Like yeah. I haven't really, like, dove into that shit. But not just other shit that I like. Um, I I, I love nightlife. So like yeah. you know, just shit like get your own club. Yeah, for That'll real. You know, get to the point where you know <laughs> just have my own shit. On that would be hard. Whether it's something I I, I don't traveled um around the world. So like. Just, there's a lot of things that I took from different cities yeah. that, like, I feel you could it'd be like, yeah, yeah, like like a melting pot. Shit, like, no. it's, it's, it's hella shit I want to do, you know, restaurants, yeah. fucking um, uh, clubs and shit. That's hard. Um, maybe retail stores, but yeah. that's a whole other different different ball game. But like, nah, definitely the the club, like the club thing. I feel um, it, it's coming up. It's yeah. coming, yeah. I feel like you produce for a majority of the people in LA and yeah. outside of LA. Is there anybody that you want to work with specifically right now that you haven't worked with? Good question. Um, I haven't even thought of that until right now. So the top of my head, just like everybody that I haven't worked with in LA, I feel like in order to be from LA and really have that stamp of the city, you got to, you know, you got to put in your work and, you know, work with everybody that's yeah. that's in the city so like um i've still have yet to uh work with like um yg ty yeah. dollar sign um i guess like that that little uh i guess that's that's the older generation yeah. or the generation before me yeah and then like um yeah some of the people in, in this newer generation um roddy blueface yeah um who else uh, from LA, I'm just talking like from LA. But Have you done something with Blue Bucks or not? Nah? Yeah, yeah, okay. I got a single up yeah. with them called um, Can Ball with Us, and then yeah. I got a couple records on I their. Thought, uh, I thought so. I was like, yeah, that on their um their other mixtapes, Clan Virus, yeah. Clan Virus One, yeah, um, and some other shit too. But yeah. um, yeah, I mean, shit, it would have been Nip though, yeah. Nip for real, rest in peace, rest in yeah, peace, rest in peace, Nip Hustle, um. But yeah, just anybody coming out of the city, and then like yeah. like the legends, the West Coast legends for yeah. sure, like Snoop, Dre, yeah, uh, Ice Cube, yeah, DJ that Quick, <laughs> DJ Quick, yeah, um, who else? Just people I grew up on, Game, yeah, um, Scott Storage, like yeah. you know, this is yeah, definitely uh, definitely want to um, want to work with all the legends that yeah. like I I I respect and I grew up you know studying. Yeah. I believe that you will accomplish working with everybody that you can, your yeah. heart would desire working with you. And for sure, I, I see the work ethic. I see the grind. Appreciate and that. You feel me? 
I, I know this shit gonna happen for sure. Man, I appreciate um, that. Yeah, you speaking it into existence, it's gonna happen for yeah. sure. <laughs> I mean, I believe that too. You gotta, you gotta speak it into yeah, existence yeah, for, yeah, sure. for sure. For sure. Um, but my final question I want to ask you, what advice would you Damn, give we to came, the younger we came, you? We came to the final question, man. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we could talk all day about Maybe. just anything. <laughs> all right, the final question. What advice I'd give to a younger me? Damn. Shit. That's a that's a that's a real one. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a good one, man. Shit, man. Just um Younger me. I'm thinking younger Younger Sype, younger Sype. There's been a lot of younger Sype stuff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, all right, just on the touring shit, like definitely a uh, party less. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely party less. That that would that would have been like what you, what you was gonna do? Stay inside or what? Uh, you just chilled out in the hotel, nah, just, like, man. I w- <laughs> just shit, just party less, man. Yeah. All them, you know, alcohol, drugs, yeah. different, you know, yeah. all the different shit that you know put into your body. Yeah, definitely not good, not healthy for your mind, body, and soul. So yeah, yeah. party less for sure. Yeah, um, enjoy yourself, but yeah, shit, just be smart, be responsible. I like that. Uh, do you have any final words for uh, for the people watching right now? Man, I think we covered a lot for real. Like, I think this is the most talkative I've been in like in a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, final words, final words. Let's see. Man, just you know, follow up. I guess just so you can see what I do like in my day to day. Um, I do kind of like let the people in on like you know studio sessions and you know just so they can see the process and everything that is damn near documented too. Yeah. Um, so like just expect like a lot of quality music yeah. and not just from LA artists but I got shit you know with people from Detroit people from New York um, people all over the map for real the Midwest and yeah just expect more music like I think this year yeah, I don't think this is gonna be the um the last time we sit down, you know, God forbid. Nah, but, nah, um, nah, for sure. Nah, we we gonna definitely have to do this again. Yeah, they, we that, gonna this keep a, we gonna keep doing more legendary nah, shit. Nah, this some this some shit for <laughs> real, my boy. This some shit. Um, legendary interview for sure. But uh, I say, yeah, man, just stay tuned. Like you know, just get. I I really feel like I'm just getting started. Like, yeah, I feel like um, yeah, I'm just getting started, and the hard work is catching up to like perfect timing yeah so like uh, I like that. The, the, the time feel right right now like yeah. it feel right for me to you know had a single out with draco it feel yeah. right for me to you know had his single this you know came out through a, a major like rock nation with yeah. kaylin like yeah shit even 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 before that it felt right you know having a placement with meek mill and t grizzly so yeah. Um, just expect a lot of more, uh, a lot more music, some hits, man. I yeah. mean, shit, I'm, I'm pretty confident I can make some hits. Like, yeah. I went from like you know breaking the hits to making them, so that's that's, <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of what I'm on. Like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm trying to make I some like more how fucking you, hits. How you, how you worded that right there? <laughs> In due time, though, like these, I mean, shit. Up until you know we put a plaque on the wall, and yeah. you know, it's coming for sure. But not nah, they, they coming for sure. I feel like the music is uh. What's the word? Resonating yeah. well with the people. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the homie just was using this word, marinating. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's marinated with the people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, no, nah, the music is definitely like. Um, I think the music speaking for itself. No, nah, yeah. I don't think I know the music speaking for itself. Yeah. Like, and nah, like, that's just fire. It, it makes me excited about like what I got to come. Like, yeah. there's definitely more to come. Like, just with shit, just everybody coming out of L.A., all yeah. the homies, and then and then some, and then we'll see. Yeah. You know. I know every time I hear your tag, I'm like, ooh, (laughs) Cypress. All right, let's do it. (laughs) You like the tag? I I don't know how I feel about the tag. I like your tag. Nah, because, you know, the tag is really a DJ tag. Yeah. It was a radio tag, too. That was, like, my radio DJ tag. Yeah. I I, I just know when I hear that, it's going to be some fire shit. That's all I know. (laughs) Nah, I appreciate that. Nah, um. Shit, I appreciate yeah. you for pulling up, man. I appreciate man. you. Had a good time, for real. No, nah, times. Cypress Moreno, yes, you already sir. know the man behind the L.A. music scene. Hey. I, I'm glad that you put up. Dope interview. Legendary interview on yeah. the way. Thank you. No, nah, thanks for having me, for real. Innovators, we checked out. Yes, sir. You're locked in with the Innovators. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell.